Later in this episode, I'll show you guys how to design this spaceship liftoff sound just by recording a plastic bag and a red laser pointer. But first, we gotta talk about Starfield a little bit. Just out of curiosity, I searched through the 50 most recent game reviews by IGN to see how often they mention sound design, and this is what I found. Somehow only 7 out of the 50 reviews even mention sound effects, despite the fact that sight and sound are the only two senses that we use to experience a game, which feels kind of crazy to me. As we all know, graphics are mentioned in every review. Audio has just as much of an impact on immersion in an RPG as the graphics do. I just picked IGN as an example, but they're not the only ones. It's kind of just the norm across all of game media to gloss over sound design when talking about games. Even Bethesda themselves released a seven minute long video a year ago titled Starfield, The Sound of Adventure, and they barely talked about sound design in this video. I mean, to be honest, I don't know what they were talking about. I always say that music is the fourth dimension. And then more recently, we had this 45 minute long gameplay direct, and somehow this is all we got in that video. Audio design. I swear I gotta do all the work around here. <laughs> Bethesda, remember back in the day, the Sound of Skyrim video, where you showed us the audio director designing sound effects and we saw his tools and process for making a cool dwarven mech sound? When that video came out, I used to go frame by frame through it to try to figure out what was going on on Mark's computer screen. That Sound of Skyrim video was one of the reasons I really started to love game audio. Show us the tools and the process. I want to see the crazy recordings you guys got for the game. I want to see what sounds you used for this gun. All right, sorry, I'm done ranting. You know it's coming from a place of love, Bethesda. Well, you guys know the drill. If no one's gonna make this video, then we're gonna do it. Science fiction has historically been the genre where we as sound designers have the most freedom. Other genres place fairly tight cages around what types of sounds make sense. If you're working on a medieval simulation game, for example, good luck finding a use for your cool vocoder or your insane distortion plugins. Most of the tools in your toolbox are just gonna make things feel way too digital to even use. But in sci-fi, that digital feeling that your audio tools can sometimes impart to a sound are not only fine, but they can actually be desirable. You don't have to use a sound the way that you'd normally use it. You can change it and morph it until it's unrecognizable. It sounds like I'm kind of exaggerating, but it's mostly true that nowadays, with the right tools and approach, almost any sound can be transformed into anything else. Even something as simple as your own vo. But just because doing sci-fi gives a sound designer access to more of their tools doesn't mean it's any easier. In fact, all of that freedom is exactly what makes designing unique standout sci-fi layers so much more difficult. If you're not making an active, thoughtful effort to try new techniques and really use your tools in an interesting way, it's super easy just to make sounds that feel kind of stereotypical and tropey, which is a trap that I personally have fallen into many times. If we're going to learn how to do things the right way for our own spaceship launch design, We've got to talk to someone who really knows what they're doing. This is Paul Stoughton, the founder of Penguin Grenade Sound Effects. He doesn't only do sci-fi, his other libraries are incredible too, but he's easily one of the best sci-fi sound designers working today. I mean, just listen to this stuff. So what in your mind separates the good sci-fi sound design from the bad? I mean, my personal opinion on that is that it comes down to believability and grounding. So does the sci-fi feel acoustically connected to the objects, the characters, the world itself? Subconsciously, I think we can tell when things have a tether to the physical world. I think very commonly people just go overboard with plugins and synthesizers without thinking about like, you know, what does this remind me of? So if I'm going to process something in sci-fi, there always has to be a reason for it. I want that processing to be getting it closer to this thing that I think people are going to respond to. My favorite thing though, is, is to avoid any kind of like destructive or synthetic processing if I can, and just find something that's really interesting that works. What Paul is saying here is really important and it's gonna help a lot with our own spaceship design today. If you'll allow me to oversimplify things a bit, all of sound design can really be broken down into two categories, source and processing. In other words, everything you do before the microphone and everything you do after the microphone. If you're designing footsteps, for example, what boots you choose to wear and how hard you step are part of the source gathering, but then how you edit them and what effects you use later are part of the processing. 
In sci-fi sound design, there always seems to be a heavy focus on processing. What effects should I buy? Which repitch plugin sounds the best? Which synth is the coolest for making laser sounds? But starting with those questions is already making our lives needlessly difficult. We shouldn't rely on our software to give sounds believability. We should just start with something that's already believable and try not to screw it up. All we need to do is find an interesting sound source that feels real, and even without effects, kind of reminds us of a spaceship. And after watching some of the behind the scenes videos on Paul's website, I think there's an obvious place to start. What's that light microphone that you have? Can you tell me about that thing? Yeah. First, I got to give credit to uh, Kyle and Robbie previously at 343 on the Halo team. That's how I found out about this thing and immediately bought one and just became totally obsessed with it. It opens up a whole new world of potential sound sources. And also you sort of stretch your brain to think about what it's actually doing and you know how how light waves interact with the world and how like manipulating them translates to whatever this thing does my first instinct was to buy a lot of you know led based toys things that you think would sound really cool but it does it sounds very synthetic that was the first experiment my favorite experiment was i was doing a lot of stuff for advanced propulsion to this uh, space vehicle sound library and i had a subwoofer that i had bought i was recording a lot of different things in the subwoofer but that led me to try putting the light against the subwoofer speaker so the iphone facing up putting a dish of water on top of the light. So I would turn the lights off and you would see these the ripples like you would get from a swimming pool reflections when the water is disturbed. And then just take the light to sound, move it around above those so it's in different positions above the ripples. And what you're hearing is the light being distorted by the water that's responding to the vibrating subwoofer cone. It's rhythmic, it's organic, and that sound became one of my favorite sounds in the library. All right, it's time we design our own spaceship sound with this thing. Following Paul's example, I set up the light to sound synth on one side of my faucet and shined a red laser pointer through the stream of water at it. Then I used a sports massage gun to kind of shake the top of the faucet for even more modulation and to give the signal a more regular pulsating type of feel. This is what that sounded like. It already sounds so good. All I'm gonna to do to beef it up is add some chorus and a little bit of compression. But again, we're not trying to change the sound here, just enhance it very subtly. This is a really solid building block for the ship engine, but it's not quite enough. I need something for that classic air distortion type of sound that you hear when a rocket takes off. And for that, I've had an idea for a while that I've wanted to try. I put my microphone inside an empty plastic cereal bag and recorded myself very slowly crumpling it. My theory was that recording from inside the bag will give it a much thicker, deeper sound, and it definitely worked. Again, this is pretty awesome already, it just needs some help feeling more powerful to match the thrusters of the ship, so I put it through Sound Particles, which is an incredible audio particle generator tool that I've been using a lot lately. I set up the plastic sounds to fly past my head at random pitches and speeds. This is going to give it some pitch movement because of the Doppler effect, as well as some extra width from the stereo panning. Then I took that sound and ran it through some very light distortion, chorus, and filtering. This looping sound is gonna be crucial for the design, not only because we can use it for the thrusters, but we can also turn it into some explosive transients for when the engine fires on. To do that, all I had to do was take this design plastic thruster sound that you just heard and Doppler shift it drastically. So it starts out super high pitch and then rapidly drops back down to normal. The result of this is gonna feel like a sonic boom version of the original sound. Finally, for two small extra details on the ship, I recorded myself scraping a cookie sheet with a metal ruler and pitched it down an octave for some hull vibration noise, no effects added. And then I kind of got lucky and found some specific little short sections of the light to sound synth recording that I got that I almost threw away but worked beautifully for the initial spark ignition of the engine. And that's really it. I mean, the rest of this design is just timing everything out to the video, pitching things up and down slightly to match the movement and the overall mix. Here's what the final design sounds like altogether.
Paul's advice and guidance here is what made this design so good. And if you want to see even more of this in the full 30 minute track by track lesson video, it's available on Patreon as always. But if you guys would rather try this design for yourself, I've also uploaded all of these sounds for free to my online store. So feel free to download those with the link in the description and give this a try with the same wave files. Each and every layer here sounds so beefy and powerful, and even more importantly, it sounds physical, it sounds real. It's believable that each sound is coming from the ship. Each processing technique we used was only there to enhance the coolest parts of the ingredients that we already had, never to transform the sound completely. And all of this, of course, brings us back to Starfield. This is Bethesda's first real dive into sci-fi sound design, and how the audio is designed tells us a lot about how they view their world, the characters, and the story. Rather than me sitting here telling you what I think of the sound design, my hope instead with this video was to give you guys the context to listen to the game yourself and decide what you think, which is way more important than whatever my opinion is. This spaceship launch example is just one sound. You can apply the same recording and listening techniques that Paul is talking about to the weapons, ship control panels, machinery, lootable objects, portals, creature sounds, the list goes on forever. When you're playing the game, try turning the music mix way down and try to imagine how these sounds may have been recorded and designed. You might pick up on some familiar sources that inspire you to get out there and record yourself. Have fun with those free sounds, share the download link with your friends, and I'll see you next time.